Welcome to this tutorial video. Today's topic is oblique projectile motion. The task we have at hand today is considering a ball that's projected at a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. As you can see we're asked to calculate the time taken, the maximum height reached by the ball and the range of the ball. The first technique we use involves breaking up our angled velocity into horizontal and vertical components. So we can consider that 20 meters per second at 30 degrees to be one of two parts. A horizontal component and a vertical component. When we draw like this it looks like a vector addition. The sum of the horizontal initial and the vertical initial gives you an overall resultant of 20 meters per second. And of course you can use some basic trigonometry here with opposite over hypotenuse produces a sine function and adjacent over hypotenuse produces a cos function. So as you can see, if we know our angle and our initial velocity that is 30 degrees and 20 meters per second, we can calculate the vertical component of that 20 meters per second is 10 meters per second as it's the product of u 20 multiplied with the sine of the angle 30. Likewise we can calculate the horizontal component with the equation an initial horizontal is an initial velocity times cos of the angle. So 20 cos 30 gives us 17.32. So let's have a look. We can consider that 20 meters per second as having effectively an initial vertical velocity of 10 and initial horizontal velocity of 17.32. The good part about this is we can analyse the initial and the vertical, sorry, rather, the, in the initial vertical and the initial horizontal independent of one another. So vertically, the ball experiences a downwards force due to gravity and is accelerated at 9.8 metres per second squared. Whereas horizontally, there is no net force on the ball and so it experiences no acceleration it maintains a constant speed. So let's have a look. Let's calculate the time taken for the ball to complete its path. The first option we're going to look at here is consider the entire journey in the vertical plane. So we can take the initial vertical velocity as 10 meters per second and you note that I'm taking upwards as a positive direction. Traditionally I'd use the initial velocity as my indicator of what's positive and what's negative. So I always go with u is positive. We have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared because the acceleration is operating downwards, opposing that initial velocity direction of upwards. And as our ball returns down to the ground, due to symmetry, the speed that we leave in initial will be exactly the same speed that we achieve when we come back down to our starting point with a final velocity of 10 meters per second and it's a negative because it's in the opposite direction as it's a vector. We're being asked to calculate the time for this duration. V equals u plus at from our equations of constant acceleration using these four variables can be transposed to work out the time is the final velocity take the initial divided by the acceleration. That gives us the total time of 2.04 seconds for the ball to leave in its starting position and to project the whole way across. Or alternatively the time it takes for the ball to reach its maximum height at 10 meters per second and to come down to the same position. Option two may be consider only half the journey in the vertical velocity. So again we have 10 meters per second as the initial velocity and upwards as a positive direction. Again we have an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared opposing that initial velocity. And now we're just going to the top point where effectively on our actual trajectory path we're here. The top point is level where the velocity in the vertical is zero. And now we're going to work out our time. The same equation. This comes out to a time of only 1.02 seconds. However, this is the time to start at our initial position on the ground and reach our maximum height, our maximum displacement in the vertical direction. So, to complete the entire journey, it will take the same amount of time to reach its maximum peak height as it does to reach back down to zero. So, we total that time and again we get a time of 2.04 seconds. A third and final approach is to consider the entire journey 
in entirety rather than angles of um, components of rather um, vertical and horizontal initial velocity. It's a standard equation that takes the actual initial speed, the angle, gravity of 9.8, and we want to find time. This equation already uh, combines initial and uh, initial velocity and horizontal velocity all in the one go. So you'll note we're not worried about gravity being acceleration of plus or minus, we're just slotting it straight into the equation to work out the time. So 2 lots of 20 times sine of the angle of 30 divided by 9.8 again gives us a 2.04 seconds. It's quicker, shorter, but can only be used if we're analysing an object that projects up, out, oblique in a parabolic shape and lands at exactly the same initial reference height. The second part of the question was to work out the maximum height reached by the ball. Again, we'll show you some different ways to do this. So first of all, consider half the journey of the vertical plane. It has an initial positive velocity of 10 meters per second. It has an opposing acceleration of negative 9 meters per second squared. At the peak, at the peak of that vertical displacement, which would occur here for the actual ball, but when we're analyzing it just in the vertical component, it has a final velocity of zero for that split second. And of course, we want to work out S, the displacement. The equation we're using with these four um, variables from the equations of constant acceleration is v squared equals u squared plus 2as. We transpose that for s, substitute our values in, and we end up with a maximum displacement of 5.1 meters at the top, the maximum height of this projection. Let's consider the entire journey again. We have an initial speed or velocity of 20 at an angle of 30. Acceleration is 9.8, and we want to find height. An equation that we can use is h equals, in brackets, u sine theta all squared over 2g. We sub our values in, and it also gives a height of 5.10 meters. Again, this is fine to use, providing we have a nice symmetrically designed projectile oblique motion. Third and final question was to calculate the range of the ball. Option 1, we're going to consider the entire journey in the horizontal plane. We notice that in the horizontal motion, there is no net force on the ball. We're ignoring air resistance. So it has no net force, therefore no acceleration. So this is a constant velocity for the entire duration in the horizontal component. So it has a speed of 17.32 meters per second, as calculated earlier in the horizontal plane, for the entire journey. It has a time of 2.04, also calculated earlier in this problem. So we just need to look at calculating the range, or traditionally the distance. This is simply speed equals distance over time, the equation for average speed. Because there's no acceleration, this does the job, because speed doesn't change. For the whole duration, it will travel at 17.32 meters per second in the horizontal plane. Distance equals speed times time. So 17.32 meters every second for 2.04 seconds. We multiply those two variables together and we get a distance again of 35.3. Second option is to consider the entire journey in one hit. Initial speed of 20, final speed of 30, gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared, and we're looking for the range. Here's the equation range equals u squared sine double angle 2 theta over g. Substitute our values in, and it also gives us 35.3 meters as our range, a quick way to calculate a range. Quickly, in summary, to finish off, when calculating the time, maximum height, or range of an oblique projectile, we can either resolve our motion into horizontal and vertical components, or we can analyze the motion in its entirety. If we're using components vertically, we must remember there's always acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared downwards towards the ground, and the initial velocity component in the vertical is u sine theta. We have at our disposals the five equations of constant acceleration. Whereas in the horizontal, there's no net force and so no acceleration at a constant speed. The initial horizontal velocity is u cos theta, and we use our standard speed equals distance over time equation. Finally, when we're looking at the entire motion and not resolving into horizontal and vertical components, we can use the three equations that we've used earlier. I hope this video has helped you with the basics of oblique projectile motion. Work hard, get good results.